One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme, and ultimately he attains the Supreme. Once again, you can read together with me. One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately he attains the Supreme. Om Yadi Vendisya Kyananjana Shravya Chakshuru Kunita Mena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance and a spiritual master who opened my eyes with the constraint of knowledge. I offer the words with full obeisances unto him and all the members of the Lord. One who's a uh, purport, unless one is able to relish happiness from within, how can one retire from the external engagements meant for delivering superficial happiness? A liberated person enjoys happiness by factual experience. He can therefore sit silently at one at any place and enjoy the activities of life from within. Such a liberated person no longer desires external material happiness. This state is called Brahma Buddha, attaining which one is assured of going back to Godhead, back to home. In the translation, one whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is in word, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately he attains the Supreme. So here Bhagavad Gita is explaining that peace and happiness of a self-realized soul is like an ocean which is unaffected by the waves of external happiness and uh, pain and miseries. Of a, the analogy given elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita and uh, Srila Prabhupada's purport is that the ocean is so big and uh, there are so many rivers that go into the ocean. Uh, billions and billions of liters of water are pumped into the uh, by various rivers like Ganges and uh, the ocean is unaffected. It doesn't matter during the summer season there is no water or very less water coming into the ocean or during the rainy season there are billions and billions of liters of water going into the ocean. The ocean is not agitated, it's just unaffected. So that is the state of somebody who self-realized the Brahma Buddha state he is not affected by external happiness and sorrow because he is satisfied from within. And how does the satisfaction come within? It is stated that, um, again, the external dualities of happiness, sorrow, pleasure, pain, honor, dishonor, all that are unaffected. How is that? Because the self-realized soul understands that he is a spirit soul and not the matter or the material body that is covering the spirit soul. So what is the quality of uh, the soul? It is called Satchidananda. Satchidananda means, Sat means eternity, Chit means eternal knowledge, and Ananda means eternal bliss. That is the eternal bliss that is already within each one of us according to Bhagavad Gita and probably many few of us have realized that, but that is the aim. So there are a lot of uh, uh, pastimes in various scriptures about the various exalted devotees who are self-realized souls. So we cannot imitate them, but we can follow in their footsteps. So they have realized this Satchidananda form, which is our true self, 
and there is this eternal happiness that is within us. And uh, that is our aim. And uh, you may have heard uh, a story where uh, there was a very, very rich man and his father had died. And, uh, and he was told that his father had actually left so much of treasure for him. And then he went on this spree of trying to find where this treasure was. He went all around the world hunting for this treasure that his father had apparently left for him. And he spent years and years in trying to find this hidden treasure. And what happened? In the quest for this treasure, one day he died. And this was the ancestral home that he was living in. And so what happened? They brought his body back and they wanted to bury him. And where did they bury him? In the backyard. So they dug a hole to bury him and there they found all the treasure that his father had left behind. So the treasure was there within, but he was going everywhere else to find this treasure. So that is the analogy given here. So we have the treasure within us, this external superficial pleasures. It is there. Prabhupada says, yes, you have pleasure, but it's flickering, uh, ephemeral, transient, they say. You know, it is coming and going. The pleasure is not sustainable. The pleasure is not long-lasting. Anything in material, we have, we have seen this enough number of times, though we still hanker for it, but gradually it, it is diminishing because the true pleasure is within us and the spirit soul is within us. And uh, how, how we are not able to access that is because it is covered with layers of lust, anger, pride, envy, Three and illusion amongst all of us. And uh, the surefire way to cleanse this heart, the mirror of the heart, is by chanting the holy name. So Prabhupada said, uh, quoting Shikshamidam, the first verse, Cheto that Panamajinam, Omahadam, Vapanam, Shay, Kaira Chandra, Vitaranam, Vidya, Vadam, Jivanam, and goes on. So this is the first verse of Shikshamidam. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is there in that poster, he is Lord Krishna himself who came 500 years ago. Though he, he gave so many transcendental knowledge to all of us through his disciples, through the six Goswamis, through Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, um, and so many other exalted acharyas, but he himself bent only eight verses, and that is Siksha Ashtakam. And the first verse is Cheto Dharma how we can cleanse the mirror of the heart so that the true potency, the spiritual self within us is visible and that is the true happiness that we can excavate from us within. And, um, and happiness is also not based on our external positions, what we have, you know, the greatest car, the greatest house, all that we know, we have realized it. that doesn't give us the happiness. The more you have, the more you have to maintain and more problems you have. So it is not based on what we may have as position, but based on realizing the super soul within us, realizing the true spirit soul and the super soul within us, which is guiding us all the time. And uh, there are various uh, uh, pastimes, as I mentioned, in various scriptures about exalted devotees who have attained this Brahma Buddha state. Again, we cannot imitate them based on past times that we can hear in the next few minutes, it is something that we can try to follow to a small extent. If not, you know, we, we cannot imitate their past times or how they realize their true potential, true self within them. And uh, one such example we would like to discuss today is about um, the alva. There are 12 alvas um, in uh, Sri Sampradaya and uh, the advent of the alvas are actually uh, very nicely uh, explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam as well. I took uh, um, the translation, it's 11th canto, 5th chapter, verses 38 to 40. My dear king, the inhabitants of Satya Yuga and other Yuga, other ages, eagerly desire to take birth in this age of Kali. Since in this age there will be, there will be many devotees of the Supreme Lord Narayan, these devotees will appear in various places, but will be especially numerous in South India. O Master of Men, in the age of Kali, those persons who drink the waters of the holy rivers of Dravida Desa, such as Tamaraparani, Kritamala, Payasvini, 
the extremely pious Kaveri and the Prachiti Mahanadi will almost all be pure hearted devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudeva. So, this is explained the advent of the Alvas, 12 Alvas are explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the ripened fruit of the very tree of knowledge. We have these beautiful 12 cantos that are there in, in the bookshelf. So you, if you don't have a copy, please uh, think of getting a copy. It's a wonderful book. And um, the advent of Alva, Alvas are mentioned there. And the appearance of these devotees are also predicted in Naradiya Puran. So I have a big verse, but in summary it is also predicted in Naradiya Puran. And uh, one such Alva who exhibited this two characteristic of ex extracting the happiness from within, or from within and truly, truly uh, immersed in the devotion of the Supreme Lord. Um, all the Alvas were like that, but then uh, today we'll, uh, we'll hear some of the pastimes of the fourth Alva, and his name is Thiru Manisai Alva. So some of you from South India, anybody here from South India, you, will, you would have heard about the Alvas, and he's the fourth Alva, his name is Thiru Manisai Alva. And Srila Prabhupada has uh, translated uh, Mukundamala Spotra. So that is uh, from another Alva, his name is King Kulashekar Alva. Anybody heard King Kulashekar? So we have the book here, Prabhupada has translated his uh, works, wonderful Sanskrit uh, uh, verses uh, praising the Supreme Personality of God and uh, that is King Kulashekar. So Prabhupada has uh, translated that for us and this is another Alva and his name is Thiru Madizai Alva. Alva means one who dives deep, that is the literal meaning of Alva, he dives deep. They are always saturated with with uh, thoughts of pure devotion for the Lord all the time and they are not hankering for any of the material pleasures. Now I have a uh, interest in this particular alva especially because where I come from is, is South India, Dravida Desa from Chennai and uh, the pastimes of this Pirumarizai alva took place about 15 kilometers to the west and about 20 kilometers to the east. So wherever I was, this 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 uh, alva was well known. Everybody knows uh, the, uh, the alva and this pastimes. So it was very close to where I used to live. And uh, it starts off with uh, Brahmanda Puran. So this particular pastime is uh, mentioned in Brahmanda Puran that uh, very, very uh, advanced uh, sages like Atrimoni, Angiramoni, um, uh, and various other monies. Uh, Brigu Muni, especially Brigu Muni, and uh, Bahirat Muni, all of these Munis were actually going to Lord Brahma to ask him which is the best place for them to go and meditate on earth, which is the best place where they can go and meditate on earth, where they can get maximum benefit. And all these rishis and sages, they don't meditate for their personal gain. They, they are meditating for the benefit of humanity. So they ask, the age of Kali, which is the best place for us to go and meditate and derive maximum benefit in a short period of time. And uh, what did Brahma do? Brahma called Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma is the architect of heavenly planets. If you if you uh, uh, heard the past times of Mahanade, uh, when um, Bali Maharaj is actually going to conquer the king of heaven, that the description of this uh, heavenly planets is described that the beautiful marble gate and all the benches that are made of diamonds and the wonderful buildings that are there, Nandana Nandana Gardens, all these are constructed by Vishwakarma. So he called Vishwakarma and he, and he wanted to find out which is the best place, most pious place for somebody to go and meditate in the age of Kali at that time, the beginning of Kali. And then Vishwakarma created a scale. He created the Yada Papa on the scale. He, he took a weighing, weighing thing. He put earth on one side, Walagata one side, eh? and another side, he put Pundamali, a place called Pundamali. So, somebody who been to Chennai will know it's a very, very famous place. It's called uh, Pundamali, and at that time it was called as Mahishara Chetra. Mahishara Chetra was one side of the scale, and whole of earth was the other side. And this Mahishara Chitra one because it was more heavier in spiritual aspect. Because all the Raja Rishis, Raja Rishis from yesteryears, they used to do so much of tapas in that uh, particular place. 
So Lord Brahma said, for you to go and maintain this the best place. So Prigumani took the western part of Pundamani. Pundamani, Maishara Shetra. It's about few kilometers from Chennai, heartland of Chennai. Chennai. And uh, when they were meditating, when he was in deep meditation, he had a family, Prigumani had a family. Uh, if, you, if you remember, Parashuram is coming in the family of Prigumani. So Prigumani had a wife. So they were there. But I can tell you, this, this uh, past time that I am quoting, all these past times are taken from ISKCON Media Vedic Library. But then there was another source. So I was going through both the subject matter, but there was only one sort of difference. And the difference is, when the when Brahman was in deep meditation, um, one source says that Indra uh, was feeling jealous. We know this from several past times. Indra feels jealous when some meditation. He did that for Narada and Rishi, Prithumani, when he was doing the hundred thought sacrifice, he was stealing the horses. So he is referred to as Karma Mishra Bhakta. So Indra is called as Karma Mishra Bhakta. He is a great devotee, but he's got this. Um, you know, desire for material possession. So he's always worried somebody is going to take the Indra, throne of Indra, our, uh, our throne, our uh, Simhasana. Huh? Simhasana. Simhasana, the Arad Ertrivanana will buy him. So Anara Yar on the Nariya Tapaspanama, the Kadi of the Pavan. So what was, what was mentioned in this source is that he sent an Apsara to, to disturb the meditation of Brigumuni. And uh, Brigumuni was disturbed and he looked at the girl. And it seems in that mental uh, status of forgetting what he was aiming for, he had that material desire and immediately that, that girl, Apsara, gave birth. That is one, one, one way. And in the other source, what I read was, uh, actually Prigumani and his wife gave birth, but it was a premature baby. So that is the only contradiction in the two sources. But in either case, Prigumani's wife or this Apsara gave birth to a child. But it's unfair to say it is a child. And the reason is, a lump of flesh was born. A lump of flesh, no arms, no legs, no, no breathing at all. So it's a lump of flesh came out as a child. So what did, what did they do, Brigumani and them? They thought it is something inauspicious. There was no life. So they took this lump of flesh and they took to a forest nearby and they put it in a bamboo, bamboo field, bamboo thicket, and the redstone down because it was no life, nothing. And then, lo and behold, this, this lump of flesh suddenly starts breathing, arms are coming out, legs are coming out. It turns out to be a beautiful, beautiful baby. And in the middle of nowhere, this is the forest middle of nowhere, and the baby starts crying because the baby is hungry. And then there is nobody to serve the child. She's a newborn baby. And then, the Supreme Personality of God and Vishnu appears in front of that baby and he's, he says, do not worry, you will never ever feel hungry or thirsty ever, never ever. And this baby is looking at the Supreme Personality of God with his eyes so wide open like uh, Lord Jagannath, we had the installation last week, beautiful big eyes. The, yeah. the baby was looking at the Supreme Personality of God in such awe and wonder. And then immediately the Lord disappeared. And now the baby started crying again. This time not because of hunger or thirst, because he couldn't uh, you know, hold on to the sight of the Supreme Personality of God. So now he's crying, the baby is crying so much. And um, when, he, when he's crying, the, 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 that is heard by a woodcutter. Because it's a forest, there's a woodcutter. His name is Thiruvalan. And Thiruvalan. Um, Thiruvalan is the woodcutter. So he passes by with all his friends who are woodcutters and uh, they are all Sutra family of course. So they all come and then initially they think it is the, the cry of a fox and then they come closer, it's the baby and they are, he's a little bit older and uh, Pankajade is his wife, they don't have children. So he thought this is a beautiful gift I can give for my, for my wife. This is very very mysterious, mystical, a baby in the middle of nowhere. Nobody will even come to that forest, such a dangerous, thick, dark forest, nobody will even come there. And now here, there is a baby out of nowhere and he surveyed. So they take this baby and he takes the baby and goes home and gives it to Pankaja Devi and she's so happy. Even though she's old, like milk is flowing from her uh, breast because she had so much of affection for this beautiful, intelligent baby. Now this baby is Thiruvanji. 
Uh, this is the fourth Alma. So all the Alvas were born in very, very peculiar uh, circumstance. And who are these Alvas? Alvas are the incarnation of the paraphernalia of the Lord. So they are not incarnation of God, they are incarnation of the paraphernalia of the Lord. What does that mean? One, one Alva is the incarnation of the conch. One Alva is the incarnation of Sudarshan Chakra, and that was Peru Marisai. One Alva is the, is the incarnation of Kastubhajan. One Alva is the incarnation of uh, the garland. So different, different paraphernalia of the God uh, incarnated as different personalities and they are the 12 Almas. So this beautiful baby is there and then she's trying to give milk, give food, nothing. This baby is not eating anything. And the reason is, the Supreme Personality of God had given the benediction, you will never feel hungry, you will never feel um, thirsty. So he's not eating anything. But he's growing so healthy. He's growing, growing, growing and he's not even speaking anything. And then there is also at that time, uh, the new spread, of course, whole of Kunda Valley, everybody gets to know Maishara, Shetra, everybody gets to know about this wonder boy. So everybody comes to see, and then there is a old Sutra and his wife and kids. They come every day, they want to come and take the blessing because they know this is not an ordinary child. And then what they do, they bring milk every day. And one day they decide, I know this child does not eat or drink anything. Let's offer in a humble way the milk that we have. And after six years of eating and drinking nothing, this boy took the milk. There was, everybody was astonished. Wow, he's taking milk. So he drank the milk. And one day he opened his mouth and he said, I know your internal desire, you want a child, drink the leftover milk and you will get a child. And in a few days time, they get a child. His name is Kani Kannar. He's one of the greatest poets in South India. Kani Kannar. He became a disciple of this Thirumadise. And um, this is wonderful, so we have a few more minutes. We'll go through some of the past times. So as he was growing up, by the way, he did not just live for 41 years. He did not just live for 401 years, 410 years. He lived for 4,100 4, years. It's, it's hard to believe, but then just imagine, Sudarshan Chakra is, is eternally with the Lord, and Lord is there eternally. So what is this 4,100 when you think of eternity? So he lived for 4,100 years. So the first 700 years, he spent in trying to understand Ashtanga Yoga, in trying to understand uh, Sairism, in trying to understand Mayavadism, all these he was trying to understand. And he did not have any, any pressure, he did not get the satisfaction because and then from 700 to 1400 years, he was thoroughly reading the Vedas, Vedic literatures, uh, uh, all the Vedanta Sutras, he, he mastered all of them and then he knew that the Lord has this personalized form, that is the supreme truth. So what did he do? He moved to Tirvikeni. Tirvikeni is called Tirvikeni. First one, Pundamali. Pundamali means it's famous for the, the jasmine flowers that Prabhupada is wearing. That is Pundamali. But he moved to Tirvikeni, which is about, which is close to Bay of Bengal, which is about 10 kilometers from Chennai. So here, he goes there and he starts meditating. Again, here the verse that we are reading, let's not track, lose track of the verse that we are reading. One whose happiness is within. So he did not anchor for anything external. He derived the pleasure from within. He knew he was the servant of the servant and he was and he was performing devotional service for the Lord. So the first pastime of him, he is actually uh, meditating. In the, in, in, in the footstep of a tank. So Thiruvayasi Alva is meditating. He is meditating. Everybody with me? Can you hear me? This Thiruvayasi Alva is actually meditating near the tank. In the steps of a tank, he is meditating. Lord Shiva, Parvati, both of them are in Nandi, the, the bull carrier, and they are flying across Chukliki, Thiruvayasi. It is said in the Vedic uh, scriptures, whenever the shadow of the Nandi on which Shiva and Parvati are flying, it falls on anybody. And the Nairyarmal Patalo, they will get all what they deserve, all material benefits they will get. Money, fame, riches, everything they will get. So Shiva, Parvati, they know that they are going. And what did uh, Thirumadi say do? He knew the shack, they are going to go on top, they are coming. From here is like an aeroplane, they are coming. And the sun is there behind that. And the shadow is going to fall on him. And the narrow world, he moved away. 
he deliberately moved away. He doesn't want the shadow to fall on him because he thinks it's inauspicious. And why is it inauspicious? Because he will get the material desire, he will start getting material acquisitions and he does not want because he is deriving the happiness from within. So Parvati was really upset. He said, what is this? I can't believe in this age of Kali there is somebody who does not want material riches and is moving away from the shadow. Who is that? And then Lord Shiva is saying, this Thirumar is saying, one of the greatest devotees of Lord Vishnu. Leave him alone, let's go. No, I want to go and see. Maybe I want to still test him whether he really does not want any, any material pressure. I want you to go down and in front of me, I want you to ask him to ask for some benediction and let's see what happens. So they come down. They, he's, he's ignoring. He's ignoring Lord Shiva. He's, he's in meditation and after that, he's teaching his old cloth. He, he lives for so many years, right? So he, he has one old cloth and he does not throw it away unless it's very bad. So he's using a needle and, uh, and a rope to it and he's teaching the cloth cloth. Lord Shiva is sitting here next to him with Parvati and Nandi. Then Lord Shiva is saying, I'm here, you are ignoring me. I'm asking you, what is the boon that you want from me? I do not want anything, I am very happy from within. I am asking you again, ask me for some benedictions. Lord Shiva is saying, ask me some benediction. Then he says, okay, you are forcing me to ask me a benediction. Okay, uh, can you grant me liberation? Otherwise, I don't go back home, back to God. Can you grant me liberation? Lord Shiva said, I am sorry. I don't have the power to give you liberation. Only Lord Vishnu can give you. I cannot give you that. Please ask me something else. And then next he is asking, okay, can you postpone somebody's death by one day? Lord Shiva again, I am sorry, I cannot do that. It is based on karma and the supreme will of the Lord Vishnu. I cannot do that. Then he said, what's the point? You are asking me to ask for some boon. You are not able to give me whatever boon I am asking you. Then he said, please ask me another thing. Then he says, you know what? This uh, needle that I am stitching my cloth, that, that thread is falling off from the eye of the needle. You know, every time it's a problem, then I have to look through the whole wood. It's a problem. So please grant me a boon that the thread will never become small and it will always be inside that uh, needle. Parvati was furious. He's insulting you. You can give him the whole universe and he's saying, make sure that the thread does not fall from the eye of the needle. So Parvati said, you have to do something right away. And what Lord Shiva said, yes, what my wife is saying is true. And he opened his third eye. He opened his third eye. Fire, this blazing fire of destruction is coming out. He said, I'm going to burn you to ashes like I did to the Kandarpa, who's the Cupid, that, uh, you know, one who causes the lusty desires. He, he burnt him, if you remember the past time. I'm going to burn you like Kantarpa. The fire is coming towards uh, Tirumar Zayalwa. And he has Tirumar Zayalwa as a third eye in his right, right toe. Right leg toe, he's got a third eye. Shiva has got between the eyebrow. Tirumar Zayalwa has got in his toe. From here, the third eye opens and then there is huge fire, much bigger than what came out of Shiva's eyebrow. Between the eyebrow, this is coming. So this fire is going towards Shiva, it engulfs all the fire and it goes towards Shiva. Now Shiva, um, actually another cloud, if you remember Samvartaka cloud is the cloud that was released during um, Govardhan Leela. Indra released uh, Samvartaka cloud. So this is another type of cloud of devastation that was released by Lord Shiva to put that fire that is coming towards him. And there was so much of water. Four feet, five feet of water that are there, and the fire is finally put out. And then Lord Shiva and Parvati are looking at Tirumal is he's actually levitating. He's levitating above the water. And he's still meditating on the Supreme Personality of God because he's got that pleasure from within. He's got the pleasure from within. And at that time, Lord Shiva gave him the name Bhakti Sara. That's the time that Tirumal is got the name from Lord Shiva is Bhakti Sara. Bhakti Sara means print essence. It's like, like concentrated form of devotion. And then he told, uh, Lord Shiva told Parvati, see your inquisitiveness to made what uh, what had happened right now. It's like uh, Durva Samuni. Durva Samuni had, uh, uh, you know, become angry. And then he did the same thing, similar thing to Ambarish Maharaj. And we did this and we were in trouble. So let's go. And then we got up in the Nandi and, and uh, quickly went. And then, uh, there was also an another, uh, another past time, Suktihara. Suktihara, anybody has heard the term Suktihara? 
Sutihara is a form of goblin. So he sees Tirumarze Alwar down. He's meditating on Lord Vishnu. He does not want any material benediction. He's very, very happy. The Sutihara is actually flying in a tiger. And then he sees Tirumarze Alwar down. So he comes so close to him, but this tiger that he's flying on stopped dead on tracks. He doesn't want to go in. Then he's trying to pull the tiger towards Tirumarze Alwar. He's not going. Then he knew that there is an exalted personality uh, sitting here. So he quietly goes and he says, why are you wasting your time trying to stitch your own old cloths and meditating? He lifts his right arm and he takes a big shawl or a big a sheet of cloth that is made of expensive jewels. And he says, here, take it, to show that he's got power. And Tirumar Zayalva, even though he looks so poor, what he does is, he says, it's okay. And then he, he takes something from thin air and that is a shawl that is made of the most, most, most expensive diamond studded. So he doesn't want that, but he's saying, you know, I don't want that. If I want, I can make all these things because the Lord will give. So he takes and he gives it to him. Then he knows that this is a supreme person. He falls at his feet and still he's still got something. So he takes like this and he takes a Rudraksha Mala and he gives it to uh, Tirumari Sen. And what he does, he's wearing a lot of Tanti Mala. He takes one and he gives it to him. It becomes diamond chains, most expensive big diamonds on a string of gold. He gives it to him. Falls in his feet, never to feet, and never to return again. So this is the power of um, a devotee. And another pastime is there is a master of alchemy. He comes and he says, "Here's the pill. Take the pill, and one sixteenth of copper can be made into gold." He says, "It's okay." He takes some of the wax, you know, the dry wax from the ear. He takes it. He takes some sweat. He takes some sweat. Makes it into a ball, and he says, "Take this." He takes it to his house. He becomes the most richest man ever to live in South India. So he took, he made him uh, so-called millionaire by wax and some of the sweat. So these are all some of the pastimes of, of this exalted devotee. And um, so he thought, you know what, I'm not able to meditate on this Lord. All these distractions are coming, Lord. Shiva is offering me benedictions and this uh, uh, you know this uh, goblin came he's giving me all these expensive things but i don't get any satisfaction i get satisfaction from within and then this uh, master of alchemist he came and uh, he's actually telling me how to make gold so let me go and hide in a cave then he goes and meditates in a cave for many many years and that's where he meets the three other um, alwar the first three alwar he meets them that's how they come the cave is so dark when they see there's so much of light inside the cave then they know Tirumarse Alwar is inside that. And then later on, uh, Tirumarse Alwar decides to go to Kanjiburam. It's about 40 50 kilometers from Chennai. He goes to Kanjiburam. And there is an old lady who's actually doing so much of service for this Alwar, cleaning his place and everything. So one day, Tirumarse Alwar, Tirumarse Alwar becomes uh, so happy with this uh, person who's doing so much service. She's an old, old lady. She asks her boon. What is the boon? I want to become very young. So Thirumar Zayalwa, who is none other than Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord, gives her the benediction. She became one of the most beautiful women like that of heavenly, heavenly planet. So in heavenly planet, in Gajendra Moksha, the Leela, when we read all these denizens from higher planetary system, they come to these caves in Triputa mountain. And when they take bath in this river and lake, these rivers and lake get that perfume from their bodily order. It's not like somebody spraying perfume. We spray perfume there. The natural body order is so much. It, the, the breeze that passes through them, so much of uh, fragrance is there. So this lady got a heavenly body where she never ages, this old lady. And uh, the right, right after, um, um, after she gained this youth, uh, Pallavaraya, King Pallavaraya passes by and sees this beautiful girl, let me marry her. She, he gets married to her and then he notices after a few years he's getting old this lady still not getting old because she got the boon from uh, chakra and then he asks what is the secret and then she says okay this is from tirumar sayalwar but don't go to him directly remember kani khanna i told you about kani khanna was born old sudra they came gave milk and they got the benediction to get a child so he's a big devotee so they say go to him because he comes to you for begging because he's a he's a brahmachari he comes to the kingdom to beg some rice. When he comes, tell him to bring Tirumarzai to the palace and then you can ask the benediction that you also want to become young. So he asks Kanikana, please bring uh, Tirumarzai to the palace. He says, my master won't come to anybody's house, anybody's palace, even to king's palace. He was so angry. 
and he knew that Kanikana will never sing in praise of any human being because he uses his tongue only to praise the Lord. And he says, I want you to sing in praise of me. He says, no. And then he says, okay, I'm going to chase you from this kingdom. Get out of Kanjibram. So Kanikana runs to Thirumarza and says, I've been asked to go from uh, Kanjibram, otherwise I'll be killed. Then uh, what did Thirumarza says, if you are going, I'm coming with you. And if I'm coming with you, who's going to serve? Varadraja Perumal, which is Vishnu in Kanjiburam. And if Varadraja Perumal, Vishnu is not there, how will the demigods be there? Nobody will be there. Okay, let's go. So, Kanikana is walking. Behind him, Tirumarja Alva is walking. Behind him, Vishnu, with his bed, he rolled up the cart, you know, the snake bed. He rolled it up under his arm and he's walking behind Tirumarja Alva. And behind him, whole host of demigods are walking behind Brahma, Shiva, everybody is walking behind. And then next day, early morning, all the ministers went and banged the door and they said, you know what is happening to the king, Pallavaraya king? They said, open the window and see, they open the window, there is a big dark cloud that is hanging on top of Kanjipuram. All the trees are dead, all the rivers and lakes are dried out. So there is famine in such short period of time because all the demigods left, supreme personality of God had left, everybody left, they were walking. Then he realized his mistake. He runs, chasing behind them, falls in their feet because of the false pride, all this happened. Then uh, Tirumar Shayavala prays to the Supreme Personality. He's Chakra, you know, Sudarshan Chakra, he's praying to the Lord again. And so he, he's, um, you know, he, he knew his mistake. Let's go back again. So the Lord comes back again with his snake bed in his arm. He, he rolls the snake bed again, again lies down. That's how Madhuraja Perumal is in Kanjivan. So that is the nature of the exalted devotees. They do not derive, they are not hankering for any pleasure from externally, external source, because that is flickering, fleeting, as we mentioned, ephemeral, transient. They are actually looking for the love from within. And that's the verse that we are studying today. One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme. So we have a few more minutes. There is also another uh, pastime. Uh, there is a place called Perum Puliyo. So again in South India, where uh, Tirumarzai Alva is going. He's going towards Kumbakonam. That is another 250 kilometers from there. He's going. He stops in this place and then there is a, he, he stays there for some time. There is a temple there. And the deity in the temple, the Vishnu deity in the temple, wherever Tirumarsa is going, if Tirumarsa is there, the deity is turning this side. If, if Tirumarsa is going there, the deity is turning this side. He's turning wherever this exalted devotee of the Lord is going, the deity, the Murti is turning, turning the head. This, so everybody was uh, saying this is, uh, this is great and then they offered him great uh, prayers and uh, worship and then um, they did not believe who he was and then he showed the Rupa of Lord Vishnu and uh, all the health and everything.